Every now and then, science crosses the thin line between amazing and downright freaky. Now, Ectolife is definitely one of those times when science has ventured into the freaky part. Have you ever imagined a baby being produced in a factory-like setting? Well, a video of rows of babies being grown inside a pod that looks like a scene from Keanu Reeves' Matrix has got many people talking about the future of pregnancies. Ectolife is the world's first artificial womb facility, a concept that allows parents to create customized babies. Intriguing, right? But could this be the future of fertility? Or just some sci-fi concept? Stick around till the end and let's discover what exactly this concept is about. What artificial womb facility is? What are its features and why is Ectolife needed? What is this concept about? This concept came from the Berlin-based Hashim al Ghaili, who is a producer, filmmaker, science communicator, and a molecular biologist by profession, according to his website. Ectolife is a concept that allows parents to produce customized babies using artificial wombs. An elite package is also available, as this would allow parents to select their baby's intelligence, height, hair color, eye color, physical strength, and even skin tone. Algaley claims that the foundation for Ectolife is a groundbreaking scientific research carried out by researchers all over the world for more than 50 years. It will be able to produce 30,000 babies per year in transparent growth pods in a laboratory. The facility would use renewable energy and have 75 labs with up to 400 growth pods, also known as artificial wombs, according to the UK's Metro newspaper. These pods are designed to simulate the environment of a mother's womb. According to Metro, a real-time data display screen on the pods allows parents to monitor their child's progress. This data can also be monitored using a phone app. The artificial intelligence-based system also monitors the physical features of your baby and reports any potential genetic abnormalities, Al Ghaley told Mirror.co.uk. Artificial wombs may sound like science fiction, but they are the latest advancement in reproductive technology. On July 25, 1978, a baby girl named Louise Brown was born at Old Emmon District General Hospital in Manchester, England. What made her birth notable is the fact that Louise was conceived in a Petri dish, and she is the first baby conceived through in vitro fertilization. Louise's mother had a mature egg removed from one of her ovaries, and it was combined with Louise's father's sperm. Mrs. Brown's uterus was then implanted with the resulting embryo. Louise was born nine months later. Natalie, the Brown's second daughter, was also conceived through IVF. Natalie made history in May 1999 when she became the first IVF baby to give birth to her own child. Louise followed suit in December 2006, giving birth to a healthy baby boy. According to the Ecto Life video, the first step for prospective parents is to have their eggs and sperm combined through in vitro fertilization. This would allow them to select only viable and genetically superior embryos. Al Ghaley clarifies that genetically superior embryos are primarily those that are free of genetic issues that would result in miscarriage. He does, however, mention that the process could also be used to screen for birth defects, which is already common practice in most IVF treatments. That's not all. You can also customize your baby in what they have called the Elite Package. This allows parents to change over 300 genes before implanting the embryo into the artificial womb. This pick-and-choose feature, which includes everything from hair and eye color to height, intelligence level, and skin tone, is made possible by the CRISPRCA's 9-gene editing tool. This would allow for the possibility of fixing any inherited genetic diseases that are part of your family history so that your baby and their offspring will live a healthy, comfortable life free of genetic diseases. This may appear far-fetched, but according to Al Ghaley, CRISPRCAS9 has already been used to correct a genetic mutation in human embryos that is linked to a condition known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which causes the heart muscle to thicken. Besides this, babies are steadily and sustainably maintained by two central bioreactors to ensure and support healthy growth. The first bioreactor delivers nutrients, vital hormones, antibodies, growth factors, oxygen, and an amniotic-like liquid solution to the child via an artificial umbilical cord. Babies are also given custom nutrients tailored to their needs, thanks to an eye-controlled system. Meanwhile, the second bioreactor collects and recycles the baby's waste products that are released through the umbilical cord. Ectolife could also allow parents to see and hear what their baby sees and hears by using 360 degrees cameras inside the artificial womb and a virtual reality headset. Meanwhile, speakers could be used to play a variety of words and music to the baby, 
simulating the sounds that babies hear while in their mother's wombs, according to Al Kaley. Once a baby reaches full maturity, the birth process, according to the video, can be done with just the push of a button, causing the fog amniotic fluid to drain from the growth pod. Before we proceed, if you've made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe for more related contents. So do we really need artificial wombs? According to the World Health Organization, approximately 300,000 women die as a result of pregnancy complications. The ectolife artificial womb is intended to alleviate human suffering and reduce the likelihood of C-sections. Premature births and C-sections will be a thing of the past thanks to ectolife. Hashim claims it can also help women who have had their uterus surgically removed due to cancer or other complications. He believes it has the potential to help countries suffering from severe population decline, such as Japan, Bulgaria, South Korea, and others. Al Ghaley also stated that artificial womb facilities could become a reality in 10 years if ethical restrictions are lifted. On the other hand, many critics have questioned the broader implications of an artificial womb facility and the ability to choose the characteristics of your offspring. Hashim has stated that only ethical questions remain, which may underestimate the precedent set by such procedures. Some have even imagined an arguably not so outlandish scenario in which a nation decides in the future to breed only the strongest, healthiest, and most complete human beings, and what the consequences would be. What do you think about this concept? Feel free to share with us in the comment section.